The twenty-fifth day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth and formed man in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the earth of the Chaldees, in the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt, around the thousandth year since David was anointed king, in the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, in the year 752 since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we, who have known the mysteries of his light on earth, may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoiced before you, as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulders dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augusta that the whole world would, should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went out to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, I want to wish you and your loved one a blessed and peace-filled Christmas. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. What joy these words bring to the ears of people around the world and to those gathered here in this basilica or watching on television. To all, I express the personal closeness and spiritual affection of Pope Francis and assure you of his prayers as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Tonight, heaven and earth meet and the divine and human come together. This is the mystery we celebrate. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. What does it mean to celebrate the Christ birth today? Perhaps we have forgotten what happened. Let us reflect on St. Luke's Gospel, which we just heard. At a moment of history, in a society which was divided between conquerors and subjects, rich and poor, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. All went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. In that moment, something happened, something which should have been forgotten, but has not been. This was an event. A man and a woman were awaiting their first child. They were going to a different town to register their names during a census. They were part of a people, but were among the lowly and forgotten of the earth. They were searching for a place to stay so that they could have their child, but there was no room for them. They were forced to have this, their child in a tiny grotto. Do we realize that this is, this is what we celebrate, this event? Do we recognize that this is why 
we have been so busy to celebrate this event. We will celebrate and spend time with our families, but have we taken time to remember that Christmas is a memory of an event which still has relevance today? Busily consumed by work, parties, and activities, we easily forget the real meaning of this event. The baby was born totally unknown, yet something profound had happened. The shepherds were mysteriously asked by an angel to come to see this child. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they came. For the angel announced to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. When the good news was announced, heaven and earth rejoice. And the angels cried out, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of goodwill. A bit later, the powerful of the day also heard of this birth. Matthew recounts that Herod became so concerned about the threat to his power that he consulted his whole administration, who told him something happened there. They told him that people had been awaiting the Messiah. Many people thought that this child could be the Messiah. Some mysterious people came from the East following a star to see the newborn infant. This child attracted people from all over the world. This teaches us something about how to evangelize. Not by platitudes or programs, but by attraction. There was something wonderful about the presence of this child that drew shepherds, angels, and the Magi. Christianity is an encounter with someone that fills us with fascination and who not only responds to our heart, but also surpasses the most ambitious expectations that we could have. Jesus Christ takes us out of mediocrity and middle-class boredom and leads us to wonder before a newness that fascinates life. This newness is not exhausted in an instant, but continues persistently in history through the church. That is, through the company of friends with whom we walk in ordinary life. The servant of God, Luigi Giussani, once said, I quote, a new reality is not built on the basis of speeches or alternative projects, but on living gestures of a new humanity in the present. By concrete gestures, I mean those in which, with your hands, you can touch the humanity of the other. And in this manner, we can all be more ourselves. So that this does not become an abstract phrase, closeness is necessary. The real and tangible encounter with our brothers and sisters is necessary, especially with the most poor and vulnerable. I firmly believe that this is what Pope Francis is trying to teach the church, to teach us. 
in the mystery of the incarnation, the word was made flesh, communicating the closeness of God. God is with us. The Holy Father calls the church in light of our belief in the incarnation to be close to others. The word drew near to us, coming not in power, in might, but in the tenderness of a little child. The Son of God made himself little to make us great. He gave himself to us so that we might give ourselves to him and to love him, even in the poorest of the poor. He shows us love so that we might respond in love. This child, whose birth we celebrate this evening, would be at the center of a controversy that will never finish. Those who want to see him and love him, and those who want to destroy him. Those who want to see him and those who follow him even now do so because of who Christ showed himself to be, the Savior. This event of his coming was unforeseen and had an unforeseeable quality, a newness. St. Paul describes it in his letter to Titus, writing, I quote, when the kindness and generous love of God, our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. He promised his disciples that they would reach God if they followed him. He made a proposal to them, a proposal charged with meaning. Follow me and you will see the glory of God. The child born in Bethlehem grew and gave a gift to the world, and this gift is the church. This church, inserted in humanity, shares all the difficulties, challenges, and wounds of a fallen humanity. But in the end, the church is the place where Jesus offers each person the chance to encounter him, to receive his Holy Spirit, to receive the power to be his witnesses and to exercise this witness daily. We, we gather as a church this evening to celebrate an event, not something that simply happened 2,000 years ago, but something that is alive, that proposes something new, something that opens us to a sense of mystery, a sense of God and his plan. Just think of what the shepherds must have felt at the angel's announcement or when they saw the child and his mother. Think of the joy of the Magi when they saw the star and the fulfillment of their heart's desire, something absolutely new happened. Does this birth not size you too? Is it this newness of his birth that must be shared with the world? Sometimes we must emerge from the past to understand the newness of what Christianity is. It is the announcement on, of an event. A person comes to save us. God comes as a child to save us. The Word became 
flesh and made his dwelling among us. The church has a mission to announce God's presence to humanity. It is this presence that changes our lives, yours and mine, daily, now. God is still with us. The newborn child mysteriously and surprisingly invites us, fragile as we are, to be part of this mission to announce with the angel to each person we meet, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Oh. 
On this holy night, we are filled with new hope in the saving power of God. Mindful of our Savior's love for his church, let us now offer our petitions in confidence. For our church's leaders, that the Holy Spirit will guide their efforts to carry out their responsibility to protect children, youth, and adults and to make reparation to those who have suffered abuse. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all world leaders, that they will seek to protect the lives of the unborn, immigrants and refugees, freedom of religion, the sanctity of marriage, and to work continually for peace, especially in Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Ukraine, Syria, and Iraq. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our military personnel serving overseas, for law enforcement officers and fire and rescue workers, may God bless those who serve and protect our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all survivors of abuse, that they will receive God's healing grace and know the profound love of Christ for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that many will devote their lives in loving service to the poor, the marginalized, the sick and homebound, and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that God will bless the church with an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have been enrolled in the National Shrine's Christmas Novena 
and Shrine Prayer Guild Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all those who have died and gone before us in faith may now share in the glory of God's heavenly kingdom forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, your son's birth brought light and peace to a world darkened by sin and death. Hear the prayers we offer on this holy night and we fill our hearts with unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite you to use the envelopes provided in the pews as a means of sharing in our ministry at the Basilica of the National Shrine. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we attend, we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, united, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, my brother Donald, the Bishop of this Church, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary the Immaculate Virgin brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended 
by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, 
Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, and also the word of the Lord, my soul.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we bring this Christmas Mass to a conclusion, allow me to express a few words of gratitude First and foremost to each and every one of you for being with us on this Christmas night. And I apologize that we do not have seats for everyone, but we can't build a bigger shrine at this point. <laughs> In a very special way, I am delighted to welcome those who have joined us at home through the Eternal Word Television Network, the Catholic channel of Sirius XM Radio, and We Are One Body Radio. I would also like to express our deepest appreciation to the Eternal Word Television Network and the administration of Sirius XM Radio for broadcasting this Mass to millions of viewers across our country and throughout the world. I am grateful to Father Michael Weston, our Director of Liturgy, for all that he does to make certain that our Masses are so prayerfully celebrated. And it is thanks to him and his nearly 100 helpers that the Shrine looks so beautiful on this Christmas night. I am grateful as well to Dr. Peter Latona and our choir for making tonight's Mass a moving celebration of our Lord's birth. A word of deep gratitude is expressed to the staff of Mary's Shrine, most especially Monsignor Vito Bonanno, Father Raymond Lebrun, the sisters, servants of Mary Immaculate, Jackie Hayes, our deacons, lectors, and our servers for their assistance with tonight's liturgy. In a very special way, I want to extend our collective gratitude to the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, for being with us on this Christmas Eve. As Nuncio, Archbishop Pierre is the personal representative of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We are so fortunate to have Archbishop here with us throughout the course of the church year, and we thank him for his homily tonight, as well as for his ministry to the church in the United States. To each of you, those gathered here in this great basilica, and those who join us through television and radio, it is the prayer of each of us here at Mary's Shrine that through the intercession of Our Lady, you will be filled with every blessing this Christmas and throughout the coming new year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive from far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's same birth by announce, be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and fervor and make you sharers with the Church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.